Hi guys and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl, Ruka. A big boy Sam here bringing you a part two of Hot or Not. Today it's a part two of Pet. You know what it is. Let's get right into it. So I just want to start off by saying, even though I know I said it in our part one, the opening is so good and it means even more now that we've actually watched the rest of the anime. The deterioration, the torment, the torture, and it's all an internal struggle. The opening was beautifully done, the music, like just everything about it was beautifully done. Yeah, I concur. The opening definitely rings home, especially the further on in the show you get. Towards the end, the opening is basically synonymous with the whole season. Yeah. And I just was like, you know what? Awesome. Also, I don't think that this anime is like a bingeable anime. Like, it's not something that you should sit there in a day or in two days and watch, which is what we did. <laughs> yeah, um, every episode seemed long. Now, for some animes, that's a good thing. But something that is this psychological, this thought-provoking, it's not. And I can't blame the studio for this or the writers. I have to blame myself. It's my own fault. Should have taken my time with it and watched it properly, but got a lot out of it anyways. Well, when we promise to binge the whole anime, we've got to do it. We've got to, we've got to come through. For me, the character who was the most complex has to be Sukasa. He was a really good villain, but at the same time, he was a victim. I don't know if this is what you think, but I think he's one of the smartest characters or let's say well-developed and very intelligent characters I've seen in a long time. Like my guy was playing 4D chess the whole, the whole anime, he's, he was mad. And guys, seriously, if you haven't already watched this, trust me, you would love it. Just take your time with it. But yeah, Sakasa, yeah, I agree. Definitely complex, well-rounded, properly built, character they didn't pull no punches with making sure that you knew exactly where his head was at and what was going on it just felt like watching naruto you know when kuro and i tried to genjutsu itachi i put you in my genjutsu no i put you in my genjutsu that's the whole <laughs> literally that was the whole show Every, everyone was in the genjutsu at some point no i completely agree he is extremely smart and his whole story was really tragic and you can't really blame him for where he was at either just because of the context of the actual show everyone's minds are being changed altered manipulated and there is no one that you can trust there is no where you can turn to because this company is looming over everything and you never know if what you actually believe is true is actually true because someone could have gone into your mind and changed your memories or inserted someone else in your memories and it really did play with the whole idea of what makes a person a person for me the one aspect of the show which i really do like which brought the realism out for me was when they explained the way the mental disorder or mental illness of they explained it in a way where it made sense you know the fact that some people are are basically husks of themselves and their logic behind it being that they don't have their own memories and they they're sponges for everyone else. I know we touched this a little bit in the first season, but it really dug deep when you understood the love that they had for the person who gave them their first good memory. It was beautiful. The concept of it throughout, they stayed intellectually coherent throughout the whole show. They never let up and you knew that that was the common thread throughout all the characters we were given that had this power that unfortunately I've got no memories of my own so the one who gave me the memory is God and I loved it I really did way to create hijinks and and really complex storylines from that they did a very 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 good job here but something I will say is that at times there was so much 
things going on that it did make it hard to follow especially in the earlier episodes it was like so difficult to follow the story because so much things were being thrown at you and you didn't actually understand fully where everything was going and also i'm still unsure of how the company really did get all of the power that they got because all the people involved are way more powerful than the company the people in the company are just for the most part normal people and um, yet they have all of the power and yes i know you can liken this to like real life situations as well where you know the people are supposed to have all of the power yet a small minority of people actually do control everything beyond the scenes however the people here in this case do not have superpowers um you're getting political again brooks <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> sorry not sorry but you're right i mean like who better to actually overthrow power than the ones who actually have actual <laughs> superpowers? And that's one thing about the story that got to me. Like, I, if the season two or a season two does come out, I want to know how Hayashi got rid of the rest of the Qigong masters. Yeah, how did he do them? Because he couldn't have been the most powerful Qigong master. Because then it wouldn't be the plot wouldn't make sense. Do you get what I mean? How did he help the company get so powerful that they got rid of the original guys who could do psychic things? And how did he get caught as well? Because like, let's be honest, he's one of the best of the best. Like, I know they say say Tomu is the best and Hiroki was the best, but you mean Hayashi don't know a few things? He's the one who taught you. He taught, bruv, he taught you all. Even Hiroki, he taught your dad. Like, do you get what I mean? I, I definitely want to see a season two because I know they'll tie it up beautifully if they did something like that. Well, from the way that they actually left the last episode, it was showing that we have more content to produce a season two because they were talking about bringing the rest of the um the people who have the image users to the real peak because it exists in real life and they seem to feel like it was important that they see it i don't know what significance that actually has to them because it wasn't explained but clearly just hiroki and satoru's reaction to seeing the real peak showed that seeing it in real life would have some significance to the rest of the image users and maybe Mei Ling it might help her because she is probably the the most tragic character the the baby they're, they're all pretty bad <laughs> no they they are pretty bad but everybody else at least has something to ground them but she has nothing she basically looks crushed she's going through hell inside her own brain and there's no release for her whatsoever and no one that cares about her at all they just they literally call her a baby and they carry her around like a doll it's really unfortunate all of it is really unfortunate to be honest but i feel like this the whole series as a whole like it asks questions about what would happen if parts of you were erased because the person that you are is obviously a culmination of everything that you've experienced mm. your upbringing the environment that you were raised around your education and every single memory that you have yeah so what would really happen if just parts were just taken away and obviously the whole concept of crushing is altering them parts as well like taking it away yeah you might get crushed you might not altering it definitely getting crushed depending on which parts they're altering if they alter a valley they have to alter each valley and then the peak they alter like but the concept was bang on like these guys really spent time making sure they understood this i have no psychology background do you get what i mean so i don't know if they sat down with a bunch of psychologists and was like yo how, how do we make this make sense and they were like yeah 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 this is how we assume the brain works work with that but if they did well done and if they did it well done still because the concept is mad so i'm just thinking okay if altering certain memories and doing certain things to the mind crushes a person like this or gets a person malleable because not only could they crush people they were also very good hypno hypnotists bruv this was good I agree with what you've said. It does seem like they did a lot of research into like the mind and how the mind breaks, quote unquote. And they yeah. also used the, the crushing. Really, they were in a catatonic state. They've thought about 
mental illness in conjunction with things happening to the brain i mean of course but also what i want to know is do you think that hayashi's sacrifice was actually worth it because from his letter we can see that he knew that sakasa was probably brainwashed and that it was a possibility that sakasa would crush hayashi and hayashi still let him in the car and still went into the woods with him so he he already knew all of these things because he wrote it down i think that Hayashi felt so guilty for everything he's done that he was like, I'm okay with this as long as my kids are all right. Because like, let's be honest, it's it's a father-son, grandson situation here, isn't it? He, he's the father to uh, Seitaru Se and to Tsukasa, and he's the granddaddy of um, Hiroki. So it's like, at the end of the day, he's trying to look after his family. These guys who are so good at this. Even Jin is part of it as well, because Jin is his, his daughter and Mei Ling is his daughter as well. Do you get what I mean? And even Jin's mum is his daughter, sort of, kind of. So saying all of that, he was like, you know what? I'm I'm big daddy. I got to sort this out. I got I, I to gotta go to work. And this is my sacrifice because I've done some bad things. But I need the kids to be okay. And that's where I think his head was at. But for me, I feel like it was very naive. No one in the world can save everyone. We all learn this quite early on in life. But my guy was a bit stubborn in it, so he paid the price. It was quite Shakespearean, to be honest. He's trying to come out of his, his lane. Stay in your lane, bro. If you stayed in your lane, none of this would have happened. Maybe he knew he was going to die and that was part of him trying to atone for what he had done. Because I think that he was sort of in a position where he was thinking that he wished he never actually gave any of them a peek but then at the same time if he didn't do that they would have still been in torment and in a hell of sorts so it's kind of like which one is the lesser of two evils which one is the best thing to do yeah, leave them as they are or try and save them and then they're, they're a puppet of somebody else him trying to save them caused them more grief we lost one one of them is still captured still other two have disappeared but we know the company's coming for him because Hayashi, who's the guy who can create these things is no longer there Sukasa, who was supposed to replace him because like they had tabs on him since he was gone so as soon as Sukasa was ready to create proper pets Hayashi would have been dealt with yeah but they kept losing him yeah, lo losing him, but they had people stationed outside his apartment. Okay, whatever. Like, what I'm saying is that if he stayed in his lane and just dipped, everything would have been all right. Yeah, the company was still turning over these kids and making them into super assassins and whatnot, but no one would have had to go through all this hardship. Like, I'm not condoning what the company's doing. I'm just saying that sometimes it's not about saving people. Sometimes it's about having food in your belly and a warm bed and a nice house, isn't it? No, I don't. I don't actually get what you're saying at all. Well, that's because you're I'm stubborn. <laughs> you stubborn. You're you're gonna be. You'd be uh, what's his name? You'd be Hayashi. You'd be the one guy. Yeah, that's it. I need to save everyone. Let's get everyone out of there. I'll be like, yo, I'm probably more like Sukasa. Yeah, now nah, I'm. I'm trying to do me. Screw everyone else. Maybe. Yeah, that's you in in a sentence. Well, that's you in a sentence, man. And guess what happened to Hayashi? And also, guess what happened to Sukasa? I guess we both wrong here. I mean, to, to be honest, I feel like this isn't going to slow the company down. They do still have one um, person left. She can't use images, can she? She creates the image pathways for everyone else to use their images on them. Okay, okay. So they do still have her. She's she's, she's the, the only best. one left. She's the best of the best of the best. <laughs> so, and they said something about um, her brother being raised so she's gonna she's gonna try and mess with those memories they're just gonna start again the whole series basically was talking about people trying to get out of the situation and history just repeating itself again was that Sukasa we saw at the end? It basically, they're going to start fresh with yeah, him. Yeah, of course they can. Because I mean, they said his adoption papers yeah. were sorted out and he's a son. The other one, um, I can't remember his name, Long, Long yeah. he was shot in the head. That that's, There's that's no real right saving of, that. He's gone. But they do still have Sukasa. He is still... Powerful. He's, he's, still he's not fully crushed because although 
yeah, his mind is all messed up. He was still alert. So I do think that they are planning to start again. Probably like he has no memories. They'll just start fresh. He will be a brand new clean slate. Brand yeah, new. he's basically he's basically a clean slate. So they can start again. And he and they did say he was the only useful one left. So if they can just train him up. God, that's what he said. And start from the beginning. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. the sad thing about it because he, he was trying to make himself useful to the company so that he was the only one left and that they couldn't do whatever they wanted with him. But instead, they're going to do whatever they want with him. Anyway. And he is still going to be the only one left it's really it's really sad like the way that they did it i am hoping for a season two with Definitely, this one 100. i will not be binging it i'll be watching it properly <laughs> yeah because it is there is so much to get from this we couldn't even cover this in one video to be honest well i'm not gonna lie i want to talk about katsuragi but i don't think i've got time for that Katsuragi, we're gonna have to do. <laughs> do you know what, guys? We will do a spotlight on Katsuragi or a Let's Talk so that you guys can understand what we feel about some of the characters that we didn't get to talk about. To the verdict! <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah i did it for was, was, was this hot or not uh for me it was a definite hot it was a not for a few episodes and then it became very hot very quick <laughs> yeah this is definitely certified hot the bad things about the anime just it doesn't come close to the positives yeah so yeah we really did enjoy this one so join us again yeah don't forget to like subscribe and share peace